Are you concerned about coronavirus? In this video, we will show you the information that you need to be aware of as both a patient and as a practice. Coronavirus, or WNCOV, is a type of flu virus that is thought to have originated from the wet food markets of the Wuhan province in China. It is a strong form of the flu virus that can give symptoms such as upper respiratory tract infections like the flu, high fevers, breathing difficulties, and others that can put you at high risk of pneumonia or more. It is spread like most flu virus by contact with affected people. Spread can be prevented with good hand washing, quarantine with affected individuals like in China, and self-care at home unless further treatment is needed. Antibiotics do not work on the coronavirus. How can we prevent the spread of coronavirus? The World Health Organization has released supporting information to help. It is important to wash your hands with soap and water or an alcohol-based rub. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing or sneezing with a tissue or a fleeced elbow, i.e. padded clothing. Avoid close contact as best as possible with anyone with cold or flu symptoms and thoroughly cook meat and eggs. Additionally, it does also recommend using protection when working with live animals. Washing your hands regularly after coughing or sneezing or when caring for the sick, before and during preparing and cooking food, before eating and after using the toilet are highly important and one of the best ways of preventing the spread of the virus. When washing your hands, it is important to make sure you clean both the front and back and cover both sides with adequate soap. Do not forget to clean in between your fingers and under your fingernails. There are lots of videos on YouTube that will show you how to do this effectively. It is highly important to dispose of tissues appropriately. It is also important to avoid unprotected contact with sick people, particularly in crowded environments. For this reason, many patients may be surprised to get information not to attend their local practice if there are concerns that they may be affected by coronavirus. This advice is correct. For practices who are looking how to best help their patients, there are several steps they may want to take. First, it may be worthwhile changing the message on your practice phone system to identify that this is a potential issue and advice for patients that think they may be affected, i.e. to contact 111. Next, putting signs up on the practice to identify this being a current issue can be sensible, particularly those in English and in Mandarin. It may also be worthwhile putting information on the social network platforms that each practice may have or on the practice website about identifying the current issues with the coronavirus and also signposting to other sources of information on the NHS.UK website. If patients were to attend the practice and are thought to be affected by the coronavirus, it is important to isolate them. Sensible options for isolation may be to use the, the practice toilets. This may seem unusual, however it is a good option in terms of being able to clean afterwards, as well as have access to running water, particularly if there is a delay for those affected patients. However, it is important to remember that you have backup services for other patients to use in the practice as well as for your staff. If you are concerned that you have had contact with a patient, it is important to leave the consultation room straight away and wash your hands. Then contact the relevant services based on your local protocols. However, most of these do recommend either contacting Public Health England or your local lab. If you need to transfer a patient, make sure you have access to suitable face masks to help prevent further spread and protection equipment in the practice to help safeguard your staff. If you need to transfer a patient to hospital, there are sensible options that you may want to consider, i.e. letting the ambulance crew know. If it is a non-urgent transfer, it is highly important you warn the hospital so they can also make preparations for isolations of the patients. Public Health England have released several documents that you may find useful. These include documents on what to do and how to manage the situation, as well as identifying patients. Key criteria to be aware of is both the epidemiological and the clinical aspects of these patients. So firstly, they need to be patients that have either had contact in the Wuhan province themselves directly in the past 14 days or have had significant contact with people who may be affected. This is further identified as either living with a person or spending up to about two hours with a person or being around the secretions of somebody who has been affected. Taking a good travel history will be key. Second, in terms of the clinical component, this is either a patient with severe acute respiratory distress symptoms or a patient with acute respiratory distress symptoms such as sore throat, cough and difficulty with breathing. If you are concerned, please see the links that have further information in terms of what to look for. Hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact us and please do share this video as best as possible with others to help prevent the spread.